Signal gasoline. Let every traffic signal remind you, you do go farther with signal. Yes, you do go farther with signal. Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, Gateway to Danger. I am The Whistler, and I know many things for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. It's too bad, in a way, that old Horatio Alger isn't grinding out dime novels anymore because he could have grabbed off another bestseller for himself by simply writing the story of Eddie Vincent, uh, up to a point, of course. For Eddie was a real rags-to-riches success story, born in a charity ward, selling papers on the streets while the other kids were playing ball and going to the movies. Yes, he came from the wrong side of the track, but from the first, everyone knew he was going places. The only trouble was that he didn't care how, so long as he got there. There were mumblings in the senior class at high school when he picked off the prize scholarship to college. The same mumblings that echoed through the anterooms later in law school. But no matter, Eddie Vincent had arrived. Right-hand man to the district attorney. Yes, it was a thrill at first, sitting in with Ryan on all the big cases. But after a few years of it, he began once again to feel that itch he couldn't scratch. The opportunist without the opportunity. Well, breaks don't grow on trees, Eddie. Sometimes you have to make the breaks yourself. Yes, spend a few months on it. Give it a lot of thought. Then maybe, for example, on a particularly foggy night at the prison across the bay, you might have a stroke of luck. Hey, what do you think? District Attorney Ryan. Yeah? What? When? I see. Tell the warden I'll see him as soon as I can. Oh, Eddie. Yeah? Warden Campbell is on his way here. Warden Campbell? Yeah, it's Bugsy Malone. Just escaped from prison five hours ago. About three in the morning. Check with headquarters and tell Lieutenant Connolly I want a detail of five men. Yes, sir. Five men. Uh, where do you want them assigned? Well, tell Sergeant Gregg to put a man at every entrance to the building. No one is to be admitted without appointment. Call me if there are any questions. You're being pretty careful, Chief. Yes, I know. Maybe I'm flattering myself, Eddie. He's probably forgotten all about me by now. Malone? Yeah. Let's see, it's more than ten years since I last saw him. I had your job then, and Bugsy Malone almost lost it for me. Oh, I guess you don't remember. I think I remember the headlines. He had a protection racket or something? Yes, and we never could pin him down. He's the cleverest criminal I ever tackled. We never would have nailed him except for one bad mistake. Oh? What was that? He figured he could beat any kind of a rap, even murder. It finally got so he didn't stop at breaking windows and tossing acid when his customers refused to pay up. Hmm, I see. But before we were through, we had him on five first-degree accounts. Huh. A sixth-grade schoolboy could have pulled a death sentence out of the average jury. That's what almost lost me my job. Huh? I sold out, you see. You did what? Uh, There was nothing else to do. Malone had this whole town terrified, including the jury. So I sold out for manslaughter. Fifteen years. He's tried to escape twice, and that got him ten more. (laughs) A guy like that ought to know better. I don't know. Looks like he made it this time, just as he promised. He promised? Eddie, I didn't get those guards over here to play pinochle. 
No, Malone's too well known to hide out very long. He knows it. He's just hoping it's long enough. Long enough for what, Chief? Long enough to keep his promise to put a bullet through my head. With a prologue of tonight's story, Gateway to Danger, the Signal Oil Company brings you another of the strange tales of the Whistler. Now, before the story continues, here are two timely tips for making your ration gasoline go farther. When you start your car these cold mornings, don't race the motor. Even though your car is standing still, a racing motor burns up as much gasoline as a car traveling 60 miles an hour. And secondly, be sure you're using the gasoline that gives you the maximum miles per gallon. Now, if you think I mean signal gasoline, you're right, and for two good reasons. For years, Western drivers who have kept a careful record of their gasoline mileage have found they actually do go farther with signal gasoline. But that's only the half of it. Although certain gasoline ingredients are now reserved for war, the ingredients which gave gasolines their flashing pickup and speed, Signal Oil Company is still producing the very finest gasoline which can be made today. And the famous signal formula still places the emphasis on mileage. Since the only way you can get in extra miles of driving today is to get the most miles possible from every ration gallon, you really owe it to yourself to give signal gasoline a trial. Invest your next ration coupons with your neighborhood signal dealer and see if you don't agree with thousands of Western drivers who say you do go farther with signal gasoline. And now, back to the whistler. Bugsy Malone is back in circulation again after ten long years in prison. It looks like a clean break, too clean almost, as if it were tailor-made by someone on the outside. There are still no leads the next night at ten o'clock when Eddie finally says goodnight to the D.A. and starts home. Just for a change, he takes the long way, a lonely road leading through the hills above the city. Bugsy? You're right on time. Yeah. Where are you staying? Never mind. Okay. You didn't slip up anywhere? No. How could I miss with them keys? You couldn't have been followed. <laughs> What's the matter? Nervous? I don't do this every night. Neither do I. Where's the door? Here. You can count it later. This goes with it. A rifle? Yeah, with a telescopic sight. I, I don't get it. What do I want? You're still interested in Mr. Ryan, aren't you? What's that got to do Listen. with... Listen, he lives in Shelton. Now, don't give me that. I know where he lives. Mm -hmm. So you're planning to walk into the Sterling Hotel and introduce yourself to the dozen or so cops in front of his apartment? Well, I don't know. He has a house in Shelton, about 50 miles south of town. He's going there this weekend, on Friday night. And no one knows it except me. Here's the address. It's on a hill, sort of an estate, with a wall around it and a gate on the drive. He'll get there about nine and stop at the gate. There are two big lights on either side of the gate. Hmm. I, I still don't get the rifle. There's a hill right opposite the gate with trees on it. With that silencer and the scope... You can't miss. Oh. There's just one thing, Bugsy. You know the chance you're taking. Every cop in the state will be on your tail inside of an hour. It's still better than a pen. All you wanted was a chance. Now, if you slip up... Yeah, yeah I know. It's strictly my own idea. You got rid of the keys? Yeah. Okay. 
It's your baby from here on. We won't see each other again. Unless. Unless what? Unless you get caught. And if you do, Bugsy, I'm going to hang you. That's right, Eddie. Sometimes you have to make the breaks yourself. The DA's done a good job. Been in there pitching for ten years now. Good for perhaps ten more. And uh, that's too long for you, isn't it? Too long when you begin to feel that old itch again. That urge to climb up there where the real money is. And there's plenty up there for a smart DA. One smart enough to inherit the job, for instance. Uh, you can see it now. Ryan's car pulling out of the darkness into the circle of light at the gate. He gets out. Fumbles with a lock for a second, right under the light like a duck on a pond. The faint whine of a bullet. And you're the district attorney. Yes, Saturday morning the headlines will scream. They'll swear you in and you'll promise the suckers you won't rest until the assassin sits in the death cell. As a curtain raiser, it'll be made to order, won't it? You've tried not to think of it during the week. But now that Friday, the day of days, has arrived, no, your mind wanders in spite of yourself. You had to get out of cell block seven first, and there was no other way. Now, uh, assuming it was an inside job to go... Eddie. Huh? Oh, oh I, I, I'm sorry, Chief. Uh, have you something on your mind? Uh, no, no. Uh, please, go on. Uh, you were saying you talked to Campbell at the prison. Yes. It was an inside job, and I don't mean inside the prison. What? The key to his whole plan was his escape from cell block seven... You remember the Myers case several months ago? Yes, Chief. There were some keys presented in evidence. The same keys, oddly enough, that Malone used in his escape. Well, what do you mean, those keys were returned? Someone could have had them duplicated. Someone on the police force, perhaps, or even someone in this office. Oh, but, but why? I don't know, but I intend to find out. The police can take care of Malone as far as I'm concerned. I'm vastly more interested in the man who had those keys made. <laughs> well, it's still a theory, of course. Far more likely some guard at the prison. Yeah, maybe. Oh, by the way, Eddie, we're leaving at 7 tonight. We? Oh, what do you mean? <laughs> no, don't get the wrong idea, Mr. Vincent. I'm not afraid. It, uh, well, it just takes two to open my gate. Gate? What? <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. It's on the blink. You see, it has a bar you have to lift. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> yes, maybe I am, but that's true about the gate. Seriously, Eddie, I want you with me in case something breaks over the weekend. But, you see, I've already arranged for one of the men. I'm sorry, Eddie. You'll have to cancel whatever plans you had. I can't, Chief. Uh, hey, what's the matter with you? Uh, uh, I really don't know. Very well, and we leave at seven. Uh, I'm expecting an important call from Lieutenant Connolly. If he calls, tell him I'll be back late this afternoon. I'll tell Miss Quinn. Think I'll go out for a little lunch. Yeah, good idea. You look like you need it. <laughs> But Eddie isn't thinking about lunch as he walks down the street, unconscious of the milling crowd. No, his mind is on other things. It's funny, isn't it, how you can spend six months building a beautiful house of cards, only to have them fall flat in a split second. That gate, of a million gates in the world, that had to be the one it took two to open. What's the matter, Eddie? You still might pull it off if... Bugsy hits the right one. And if that locksmith's detail doesn't happen to hit the little man on Shannon Street who did it for you. Now, you've got to stop it. Find Bugsy and... But where? He's gone. You said goodbye to him for good. Eh, it's too late. Got to be another one. Wait a minute. What about the car? That's it. Ryan's car. Up in the public garage. Hello, George. Hello, Mr. Vincent. How's the garage business? Oh, okay. The DA's car in? Sure, second car down. There you are, Eddie. No one around. Take off the gas cap. Ah, take out that pound of sugar you bought at the grocery store. Now the sugar goes in the gas tank. It'll take about ten blocks for that sugar to hit the carburetor. And at 7.30 in the evening, it ought to be easy to persuade the D.A. to wait until Saturday. Let Bugsy sit on the hill all night. He's got $500 in his freedom. 
Lieutenant Conley called yet? No, not a word, Chief. Yeah. Uh, what time is it? Um, six. Well, I'll have to call him from down there. Come on, let's go. Oh, you may as well wait here, Chief. I'll go and pick up the car. My car's been in the shop for the last couple of days. Had to borrow one from the department. It's right outside. Come on, let's go. You should have known it wouldn't work, Eddie. It was too simple. Too many ways out of it. Something must be wrong with your head. No one in his right mind would have depended on a kid's scheme like that. At least he's letting you drive. That's something, anyway. You're ten miles south now. Coming into Bellevue. Forty miles to go. That's about an hour, Eddie. One hour to think of something. But you can't think. Your heart is thumping like a trip hammer. Your Adam's apple is a ball of sandpaper. You're way ahead of schedule. Nine o'clock, you told him. Maybe you could hurry. Cover the 40 miles in less than an hour. Arrive at eight instead of nine. No, no. That wouldn't work either. Bugsy didn't operate that way. He's probably been there since this afternoon, sitting on the hill with a rifle across his knees, waiting. Here's Bellevue. You've still got a chance. Take it easy, Eddie. Be calm. Think. Uh, this is Bellevue, Chief. Yes, I see. I, um, I'm a little hungry. Why not wait till we get home? Uh, there's a nice little steak place down here, and... We're ahead of time. Suppose I buy us a dinner. Well, I did want to get down there early. Oh, come on. Forget you're the DA for once. (laughs) Okay, but I'm going to stick you for the best steak in the house. There you are, Mr. Ryan. Uh, I'll be back in just a second. Order me the next best steak in the house, will (laughs) you? All right, Eddie. You have a better idea now. Thinking a little more clearly. Still have plenty of time. First, over to the drugstore across the street. Yes, there's a phone booth. Now the book. Ah, there it is. Hamilton Steakhouse. Get the phone number. Hello? Hello, headquarters? Give me Lieutenant Connolly. Not there. Okay, Lieutenant McRae, then. Hello, McRae. This is Eddie Vincent. I'm having dinner with the DA in Bellevue. It's a place called Hamilton Steakhouse. The phone is Washington 15401. Yeah, thought I'd let you know. Okay, got it? Yeah, we'll be here for a half hour at least. Right. Now, wait a couple of minutes, Eddie. Let it settle. That's it. Plenty of time. Okay, now. Hello, headquarters. Listen, I've got a hot lead on Bugsy Malone. Tell the district attorney I'll meet him at his office in an hour. He's gone. Well, that's too bad. No, no one else will do. Never mind. You'll find out who this is soon enough. Oh, you know where the DA is. That's better. Make it 8 o'clock. Well, Eddie, you took your time. Your steak's getting cold. Oh, I thought I'd better check with headquarters. Nothing doing yet. Smart boy. Did you leave the number? Yep. You know, Eddie, I wouldn't be surprised to see you, district attorney, someday. You're hoping that desk sergeant was as dumb as he usually is. It might be embarrassing if they traced that call. But it's five minutes now. Ten minutes. Fifteen. What happened to them? Where's the call? He's finishing his pie now. There isn't much more time. Oh, I feel better, Eddie. Come on. You can finish that cigarette in the car. Oh, what about another cup of coffee? Oh, we'll have some when we get there. Oh, waitress. Yes, sir. How much do we owe? That'll be, um, 
$3.85. No, no, this is mine, Chief. <laughs> Thanks. Now you only owe me six lunches. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get out of here. Oh, by the way, Eddie, yeah. I meant to ask you, why did you make that phone call across the street? Uh, oh, we all do, sir. Huh? Our phone's been out of order all day. <laughs> past eight, Eddie. Twenty miles to go. And two strikes against you. There's only one thing left to do. Well, snap it up a little, Eddie. You can do better than 30 miles an hour even in this hack. Okay. You know, I still think I was right on that key business. We found a little joint on Shannon Street. Huh? Yeah, I'm almost sure he was the one. Been mixed up with a lot of suspicious characters. Uh, did you find anything? No, uh, it's a trouble. The old boy died last month. The warden still swears the guards are all okay. Naturally. What else can he do? Yes, I know. Monday, I'm going to make a thorough check on every man who had access to that evidence. It's a good idea. Oh! What's the matter? I... I stomach... Hey, look out. Look out. You're going off the road. Give me that wheel. Chief. Chief. Are you all right? Oh, just my knee. Oh. I must have got a cramp or something. I... Hey, hey, help me, will you? Yeah, sure. Gee, I'd better get you back to the city. I know. I'm okay. Here. Uh, Take it easy. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. Hold on, man. That's right. Uh, thanks. There you are. It's okay now. Be stiff in a minute, though. What about you? Huh? Oh, I, I don't know. Something seemed to grab me all of a sudden in my stomach. How about the car? Oh. Huh. Not bad. I, I'll have it pulled out tomorrow. What's going on down there? Car off the road. Anybody hurt? No. Hey, I don't suppose you have anything for pulling us out of this ditch. Sure. Got a chain right here in back. Then you beat that for luck. But you don't suppose we can drive it. I, I well, mean, the car is... It's just eased over on the side. Yeah, but what about your knee? Oh, I, I'll take a hot bath when we get there. We can't get over our luck. A guy with chains. <laughs> that would happen one time in a thousand. <laughs> yeah. One in a thousand. Three strikes. You're out, Eddie. On the home stretch now. Winding up the narrow road toward the gate. Toward the day of judgment. The pearly gate of Valhalla. <laughs> That's a laugh, isn't it? Maybe St. Peter will be there to give you a hand when you step into that circle of light. Okay, you can stop here. Come on. I'll show you how the Ryan Gate operates. What's the matter? You're as white as a sheet. Uh, I don't know. I guess it's my stomach. Oh, I'll fix you up when we get inside. I... I can't. I, I can't move. Come on, snap out of it, Vincent. You're <laughs> acting like a baby. Oh, Here, come on, I'll give you a hand. Thanks. There you are. Now, I'll go over behind that pillar and raise the bar. You go up there and pull the pin when I say so. No, no. Shut up. I'm going to slug you in a minute if you don't get hold of yourself. Now, pull that pin when I tell you. Thirteen steps to the gate, lad, Jenny. Not even a chaplain to see you off. But Bugsy sees you now in the telescope sight. He's just the right distance to aim, but not quite close enough to recognize you. A good shot, too. Probably has a nice, solid rest for that rifle, with the center of the gate right where the telescope sight lines cross. Here we are, Eddie. He's squeezing the trigger slowly now. One second more... But that's not all of tonight's story. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending of tonight's tale. Meantime, a word on that driving bugaboo you hear so much about, carbon. Just what is carbon? What causes it? And how does it affect your motor's performance? Well, so does carbon, soft carbon. 
Coal is another form of carbon, hard carbon. There's not a motor oil made that doesn't form some kind of carbon. But here's the important point. Many motor oils form hard carbon, the kind that causes knocking, overheating, loss of efficiency, and lowered gas mileage. That's why the new solvent refining method used in making pure paraffin-based signal four-star motor oil is acclaimed one of today's greatest advances in motor lubrication. You see, because of solvent refining, signal four-star motor oil actually forms less carbon, far less by actual test than many leading brands. And because it's soft, soot-like carbon, it tends to blow out with exhaust gases, keeping your motor cleaner, running better. Today, when gas is rationed and motors have to last through the duration, this extra efficiency you get from a clean motor is more important to you than ever. More reason than ever for making your next oil change a change for the better. A change to solvent-refined Signal 4-Star Motor Oil. And now, back to the whistler. Yes, Eddie Vincent knew the cards were stacked against him, that he didn't have a chance. The gate that took two to open, the borrowed car, the telephone out of order as if someone did it on purpose, the desperate lunge into the ditch, only to have a car happen by just in time to keep him moving inexorably toward his appointment at the gate. No, Eddie didn't have a chance, and he knew it as he walked toward the gate latch, into the circle of light and into Bugsy's sight. He was waiting for it, his mind frozen into a stupor, his legs moving like those of a mechanical robot. The sharp report, a blinding flash of light across his consciousness, a cold hand on his heart, that was all. District Attorney Ryan is still behind the stone pillar, working at the gate lever when... At you, Mr. Ryan. Connolly, what are you doing here? Say, did you hear my tire blow out? <laughs> scared me to death. What's the matter? Well, that's Bugsy Malone. What? We cornered him this afternoon. I've been trying to get you since 8 o'clock. Well, where is he? <laughs> In the morgue. He reached for a gun. Good. Hey. Hey, what's the matter with him? Who? Him. Uh, good Lord, Eddie. Eddie. Eddie! Passed out, huh? I, uh, passed out nothing. He's dead. He was sick. Did he hit his head or something? No, I don't know what happened. Must have been a heart attack. There isn't a mark on him. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, the Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The curious story of Death Marks the Double Cross. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program, directed by George W. Allen, with story by Harold Swanton, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Bob Anderson speaking and reminding you to let every traffic signal remind you you do go farther with signal gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with signal. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>